my memories with my old PC, you know, the old desktop, were really deep. Thanks to my super awesome cousin, aka SAC, I was exposed to lots of stuff, mainly PC games. I already talked about After Dark games. So, what's next? Well, let's just say a familiar name. That's right, PopCap. A name that is like your local western restaurant. You don't need much explanation to understand its legacy. Here's a little history. The year is 2000. John Wiche, Brian Feeds, and Jason Kapoka, these three individuals founded a new company. They would name it as Sexy Action Cool. Yup, I'm serious. Anyway, the name was taken from a poster of Desperado, and their first title was a strip poker game. Yeah, this is pretty shady. Regardless, the game was made in order to be implemented as a revenue to their future titles. So I guess it's not shady at all. Something that they will never regret for. Fast forward a year later, they officially changed their name to PopCap and made their debut with Pachubo, formerly known as Diamond Mine, a simple match 3 game. And you guessed it, many people played it and many people like it. It was so good that it was awarded Computer Gaming World Hall of Fame in 2002. And everything else was history, at least until 2011. EA the big brother that nobody likes swoop in and acquire PopCap. The effect is significant as some employees were sacked and the company transitioned into mobile gaming. You know the rest. Thus, becoming part of the history. So that was a short history of PopCap. No need to thank me. Thanks to my cousin who decided to install some games onto my computer whenever he pays a visit back then, well, it was all worth it. And so cool. So today, to celebrate my memories and let's remember how great PopCap is once at, upon a time, I'm gonna talk about the 5 PopCap games that I play the most. Just 5. Because if I were to talk more than 5, I would be here all day long. As for the rest, I will talk about it in different form in the future. And also, don't expect Plant vs Zombie. I never actually played that game until many years later. Yeah, sorry about that. Alright, you ready? Let's go! First up, Bejeweled 2. Why 2? Because 2 is better than 1. It's a simple concept. Click between two diamonds to swap their position momentarily, and you do that to match three or more diamonds of the same color to clear them off. You know the drill. It may look like a simple match three puzzle games, but the presentation is the reason the game stood out. Everything felt so clean and polished. Sparkling of the diamond, different variation of them along with the sound they made when you clean them. Oh boy, it sounds so satisfying. Diamond clanking between each other, the explosion produced along with the clearing sound. Everything felt so perfect. It's like you enter a time capsule towards the future. It just feels so positively futuristic. Every time you fill up the elegant old meter, you then walk 
to another planet to do a new level. Every time you arrive at a new alien world, your curiosity grows bigger and bigger. Sure, you might not able to do some exploration around the planet behind you, but you still want to swap diamond to see beyond the horizon itself. Outrun 2006 makes me want to go on a road trip on familiar roads, while Bujuro makes me want to go visit some mysterious land at the foreign terrain. That's why Bujuro still aged like a fine wine. It's more than just your typical match tree puzzle game. The presentation is the biggest core element that makes me continue to enjoy this game until whenever. Chuzzle. It's mostly the same as the jewel, but with a twist. The twist is cute. I mean, just look at this. They're so cute. Fluffy ball that makes a bunch of noises with a relaxing music. What's not to like? The whole presentation is filled with vibrant colors. The aesthetic is perfectly designed, enough reasons to attract my full attention. I tell you what though, I got instantly hooked and of course I got addicted. Mind you, I was very young at that time, so yeah. The premise is that you drag any row of chuzzle and try to line up with two or more same colors of chuzzle and off you go, chuzzling them into the jar. Sometime you will encounter a big fat mini, I mean a bigger mother fluffer that upon matching will pop out and just go into the jar. Sometimes the game even throws some luck that holds your movement and you can have to find different way to clean the chuzzle. Hmm, why does it look like someone actively trying to stop me from chuzzling those little boys? Are they so afraid of the jar? Overall, Chuzzle is vibrant, addicting, and most importantly, hits you right in the mood to continue chuzzling. <coughs> Feeding Frenzy Yes, I know what you're thinking. The game wasn't made by PubCap, but hey, they published it so it can be here. In Tarzan, welcome to the jungle. In Feeding Frenzy, welcome to the ocean. And following the principle of the nature, you have to be prepared as usual. Or else, you sleep with a fish. Oh wait, I'm already a fish. You sleep with a sea coral. Anyway, you are just a tiny little fish in this big brutal world. Just like real life. And you have only one thing to do. Eat everything. That's right. Your belly is always hungry. A bottomless void. Doesn't matter what you eat or how long you eat, you are always hungry. You swim around the water and hunt down unsuspected victims just to make your belly happy. See those tiny fish? Well, don't bother make friends because you will never see them ever again. Eat them all. Eat them all. Eat them all. There's no mercy in the ocean. It's a collision of power. Erase the border to let the food enter your belly and commit war crime. Hashtag ocean war crime is real. The control is relatively simple. Move with your mouse, left click to perform boost, to catch the one fish and a bunch of fish that try to escape you but you know it's a matter of time before they enter purgatory in your little belly in order to survive in this unfair ocean you're gonna have to continuously eat until you eventually grow up to perform bigger war crime why? because those big fat mini are always there to ruin your day Apart from eating, you always have to run as well. Perfectly describing the true nature of ocean. Kill 
or be killed. Eat more fish. It's good for your health. There are tons of levels across different locations in the big ocean where you have to fend off bigger threats on the round table. The game as a whole is addicting with very simplistic control along with the desire to become the king of the ocean. What do you mean there's this guy called Aquaman? Never heard of him. Insane Aquarium or Insane Aquarium. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. Anyway, back then, I always have a big habit of staring into the aquarium. You know, the fish aquarium where the owner put a bunch of decoration and some fish and they watch them swim around? Yeah, it's that simple and frankly, really relaxing. Watching the fish swim around and your mind starts to imagine different things in life. It was that satisfying. Until I watched Finding Nemo. Okay, okay, where was I again? Oh yeah, Insane Aquarium, which I guess is a fish tank simulator. There's water, there's decoration, and of course, there's fish and snail. Anyway, you play as this cursor, you buy fish, feed fish, and buy fish. You know the drill, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Who the hell keeps throwing coins down my aquarium? Not complaining though, because ocean crisis is real. Everything is so expensive. And of course, I need the money to afford everything in this tank. Anyway, you advance through the each levels, doing the same old thing. You have to feed the fish on a regular basis. From this tiny thing, to this big boy. You keep feeding them? Oh, they don't look good. Well, just feed them. They are not hungry? Just feed them. They are not doing anything? Just feed them! Oh hey, you don't feel so good. You okay there, buddy? Oh, he's dead. Never mind, I can just buy another one. The fish are expendable, just like penal units. Oh wait, and I won't die. I am useless after all. Enemy approaching. Oh no, oh no, scramble all units. This is not a drill. Prepare all artillery. Prepare formation. Take off immediately. This is not a drill. We have incoming enemy. Mobius 1, engage. Fire! Nice work, team! I, you never let me down. I knew I could count on you, Mobius One. Honestly, that thing used to scare me. What seems to be a cute fish game ends up becoming this. This is one of the few pop cap games that I haven't beat, mainly because of the enemy. Thanks for ruining my childhood, pop cap. Really appreciate that. And finally, Pizza Frenzy. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an Italian? Have you ever dreamed about making pizza? Have you ever dreamed of becoming a Ferrari fan and become painful? Oh wait, sorry. Well, look no further than Pizza Frenzy. Your number one stop for everything pizza. You pick your topping and go to each location to serve pizza. Sounds simple? It's not. As a guy who used to work in food and beverage department, oh boy, the customer rushing in can be overwhelming. The moment you start picking an order, another one appears. And then another one. And then even another one. Those customers only care about your pizza and you just have to serve that. Depending on which topping you brought along to your road trip, you're gonna have to serve them the correct order they wanted. Give them the right one and they will pay you. If not, 
Well, pack up and leave. Click on the right order and bring it back to your pizza stores. Super as that. But with a crispy twist. Popcap won't let you get away easily. Some customers have some tricks up their sleeves. For example, you have this famous guy that praises your pizza only if you're quick enough. You got this monk that slows down time momentarily and this guy who helps you to pick up the change. There's also some criminal that actively try to ruin your business, but that's not doom and gloom. The solution though is to send them to the cops and in return, they want your pizza and they will give you a medal for your hard work. How did we go from making pizza to busting guys? That's why working at service is always stressful. Your, your hands never stops. Here, have a listen. Pizza Frenzy is a really fun game. PopCap added a lot of detail to make the game more unique. And honestly, I can see why I'm still addicted to this game. Despite failing many times, I still want to try again to win the heart of the customers. Oh hey, Moonbase Alpha! Sorry Moonbase Alpha the game, you are 5 years late. Stop copying Pizza Frenzy! <coughs> so yeah, those are the 5 PopCap games that I spent the most time on during my childhood. Even to this day, I still got the kick of it playing them for this review. And if you're interested to check them out, well, all of them are available on Steam, so feel free to check them. I came to the conclusion that life is so much simpler back then. The idea of PopCap making games that are simple yet addicting is something so magical that I could not explain how. Maybe because back then we didn't ask too much, maybe we haven't seen most of those games on the market, or maybe Life was so much better back then. You came back from school, turned on your PC, and voila! PopCap games are there to get you through the long afternoon. The games are so simple to understand, but upon playing it for the 69th time, you still won't get bored of it. It was a long-lasting experience, a nice one. I'm afraid we'll never get that experience ever again. Life moves on. There's no turning back. And reality outrun us again. <laughs>